Yeah, there's lock in there. Hi everyone, my name is Steve Lawson. And my name is Anya Papana. And welcome to the live demo scan sessions for RSNA 2020. We are live at our Global MR headquarters in Waukesha, Wisconsin. So the theme for RSNA this year is intelligently efficient. We'd like to show you that this week through a series of these live scan demonstrations uh, every day, uh, twice a day from here in Waukesha, but then also from uh, in our global head, our headquarters in Book, one session a day there as well. So these, these uh, live demo uh, sessions will span across the portfolio um, for our 1.5T and 3T products, highlighting the intelligently efficient offerings that we have to uh, improve productivity, improve image quality, enhance uh, the patient experience as well. So in this demonstration, we thought we would show you guys air recon deal and scanning with hyperspeed protocols too. Yes, and we will dedicate the session for uh, neuro applications. So that is where we have uh, our volunteer already uh, predefined in the coil. So we have on the table the 48 channel brain coil. Our volunteer is laying comfortably on his back uh, with a head in the 48 brain channel brain coil. And we will start um, now with the scanning session from outside in the scan room to do um, neuro protocols. And as Steve says, mentioned, we will show you how Aericon DL works, how um, hyper protocols will work to provide a good image quality with really fast um, scanning sessions. So now we are back here in our scan operator room and uh, we already typed in all the protocol information for the scan and I picked the right protocol and that is uh, when we can start the exam here with the start exam button. Feel free uh, if you have any questions um, you can like use the feature of um, asking questions through the team session there and we will leave some time at the end to go over all these questions. So we decided to just run a three band localizer and uh, then we have our sequences in the pipeline and we will talk about uh, every sequence and how we improve the workflow and especially the scan time there. So first we uh, uh, just run a normal three plane localizer which will take 21 seconds and uh, we will start with two D sequences where will we use Ericon DL. Yeah, um, so Aericon DL can really help reduce the scan time and improve image quality or allow you to scan higher resolution. In some cases, it's a, it's a mixture of both scanning faster and higher resolution. So um, scans that uh, require, you know, multiple uh, signal averages or multiple necks, you can cut those down um, and really cut the, the scan time. You can also increase parallel imaging. You can, uh, you know, increase the spatial resolution. There's a lot of ways that you can actually scan with Aericon DL. And for those who are hearing um, about Aericon DL the first time, um, Aericon DL is a deep learning technique. So what it does, it uh, is a trained model which recognizes noise in an MRI image. So um, we see the noise in the case space and this tool is removing the noise so that we can look at the MR images with less noise. Mm. So that really, as Steve said, is a, a really a good way to like play with uh, physics in MR to have a faster 
and still having good image quality. So here in the first example, what we show you is we will run uh, three millimeter slices and cover the entire brain. We will have an implant resolution by 0.5 by 0.5, and we still do only only a scan time of one minute and 48 seconds. So when you would do that without Air Recon DL, we have the images also ready. Um, you would like expect really a noisy image because how can you be that fast and having such a good resolution? Because in MR, everybody knows everything costs money. And usually like uh, um, you are really fighting to get the scan time down. But now with Air Recon DL, we have a tool where um, we, we don't have to worry so much about noise since um, we will remove that noise um, out of the case space. So it's really like the acquired image will be displayed without um, noise. We don't apply any filters to get rid of the noise. We, uh, we use um, a, a smart tool to remove the noise. So as Anya mentioned, it uses um, artificial intelligence to do this and deep learning um, reconstruction to be able to identify noise patterns and remove those. But one thing you'll notice too, um, we do have another um, AI algorithm that runs on the system and it's called AirX. So when she just graphically just opened up that series, the Axial T2, you'll notice that the slices were already planned. So that is uh, AirX, and AirX automatically places slices for you. It uses a set of 36,000 um, localizers that the, the model was trained on to identify structures in the brain and then automatically uh, prescribe all the slices for for you as you were to uh, set the exams up. Here in the next example, we are going to scan really a thin um, T2 image through the pituitary. And when I set that sequence up, you can see that also here, I don't have to prescribe the slices. The slices has been prescribed again via um, our deep learning uh, model uh, with um, AirX. And uh, here in the protocol, I've set that the sequence um, should pick the anatomical reference pituitary and it will go with the sagittal plane and as you can see in all three localizer it has been prescribed perfectly in the middle to the pituitary and I don't have to worry about slice prescription at all and here we do exam the same thing that we do high implant resolutions then slice it with two millimeters and we will use an um, Airbicon DL to uh, have better image quality without adding scan time So maybe for those um, who haven't seen um, all the lists for um, Airx, I can just reopen here um, another sequence again to show you that, that um, Airx is able not to only prescribe the uh, routine um, slices like the ACPC line or the OM line. We also have uh, the temporal lobe available, the inner ear, the orbits, the optic nerve, the pituitary, and even the circle of Willis. So now that brings you consistently through um, all your patients, through all your technologists, whoever does the scan, and we can make sure that um, all the slice prescription is done in the same way, no matter if you scan on a Monday or on a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Or who's at the console, or yeah. you no know, patient comes back um, for a follow-up study, then you know that the previous, uh, the previous images will look like today's study, too. It's a really nice feature. And what I like best as a technologist, is that uh, when somebody is coming back from a follow-up, I don't have to get the old exams to the scanner to make sure that I prescribe in the same way. When I will use Airx, um, I can for sure make uh, for sure be 100% uh, correct that uh, the slice prescription is done in the same way. Yeah. So now we can look at our first images. We did the T2 image high implant resolution and with three millimeter slice thicknesses. On the left hand side, you will see the image already with Air Recon DL applied. And on the right hand side, you will see the image without Air Recon DL. So, and when you zoom in here in these images, you can see um, how, how nice the images look when the noise has been all removed. I will go slice by slice so that you can really see and appreciate the image quality with Air Recon DL. So it's exactly the same image. The only thing which is different is that this is with learning and this is with deep learning when noise has been removed out of the case space. 
And we show you that example because um, with this, um, with using Aircon DL, you can have really high resolution images and have good scan times. The first example has shown a scan time uh, for one minute and 48 second scan. For the next example, um, uh, what we want to show uh, regarding speed is um, that we can combine for our diffusion sequences some hyperband to be fast. Hyperband is an acceleration technique, which you can activate here in our acceleration tab. And you can see that we can make um, diffusion images in only 28 seconds. And then for the next sequence, um, we will show you um, that uh, our entire hyper works package. So uh, the next example will show a um, TOF image. And this one will be accelerated with hypersense, with compress sensing. Yeah, so if you were to run that, like right now, that's three minutes and four seconds. Hypersense factor of 2.5. If you were to turn off hypersense, what, what was the, what's the scan time savings there? So when we wouldn't run that with hypersense, then the scan time from three minutes and four would go all the way up to seven, seven minutes and 40. Yeah. So what would you prefer to run? <laughs> I think it's an easy pick right so yeah. i quickly go ahead and just go again turn the hypersense factor to 2.5 so here also a high implant resolution 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 um, and we don't have to prescribe again because we are using rx the circle of willis has been picked in actual planes so no need for me to really um, make sure that the uh, coverage of the arteries is uh, a given I, I can just totally trust this uh, scanner to do that. So that's impressive, that resolution. That's uh, 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 in plane with 0 0.6, and there's no interpolation being done on this volume at all. So it would be real resolution. So here, the second image we did was the um, pituitary, where we did again without Aericondial on the right-hand side and with Aericondial. So just so that you understand really how, how much help Ericon DL gives you to make uh, images in a high resolution and a short scan time. Can you kind of zoom up on the pituitary a little bit? And, just, yeah. and then we can look if we can really see. Very nice. And it's so much easier to really look at the like the at the anatomy now with when the noise has been removed. Yeah. So I think um, your eye is not um, so tired after a long day sitting in front of an MRI scanner. This is really nice. So these were the examples with um, Aricon DL, and then we are running the first um, example with HyperWorks. And um, also, what we can do is we can combine HyperWorks methods to keep our scan time short. The next example we want to show you is um, where we would like combine a cubed flare with fat saturation. And we again use hypersense, uh, the compress sensing technique to reduce the scan time uh, for the first uh, in the first uh, run. But then we can combine it with our hypercube method. So hypercube is a method where we do in phase direction, shorten down our um, field of view. So in that case, we shorten it down to only 90%. And when we set the excitation mode to focus, we can make sure that we only excite in this field, phase field of view. We don't have to worry about any signal outside of that, that it goes and um, we get some rep. Mm -hmm. So uh, we really have a short scan time for an isotropic voxel here, one by one millimeter and three minutes and 38 seconds. And again, I can remove all the tools to show you what will um, be the scan time without using HyperWorks. And you see, we would end up with the scan time five minutes, so mm -hmm. one and a half minutes longer. That's great. So I will add that again. And then maybe we look again at our 
next images we generated. So we did also already the diffusion image, which was done with hyperband. And maybe we just go quickly to the regions uh, where we usually have a lot of distortion. So the eyeballs, that's the T2 image, but usually in the T2 image, you can see the eyeballs uh, way more distorted than in that example. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we will show you also the 1000B value. And you can see how nicely and less distorted the images are in a total of scan time of 28 seconds. That's very nice. So you can also use this um, is a, another great use for this is to use it on diffusion tensor imaging. Uh, right now, this is just a standard diffusion. Typically, those are pretty fast, um, 40, 50 seconds or something. But, you know, if you do diffusion tensor imaging where you're wanting a lot of diffusion directions that can cost time. So hyperband is a really useful tool, uh, particularly if you wanted to scan, like, say, 50 diffusion tensor directions, it can, can help reduce the scan time a bit. And our top rent drill, so that is the next image we can pull up here. Just as a reminder, we did that with an implant resolution of 0.5 by 0.5, and the scan time was three minutes, and that is the result. I will cut out the bone real quick. Three minutes and four seconds. And we still see all the tiny vessels here. Okay. So then um, our um, newest feature where we can uh, apply hypersense to is um, the MPRH family and uh, in general like T1 uh, images. So here also for the MPRH image, uh, we can like have hypersense applied, so compressensic applied. And you can see that the scan time here is um, three minutes and 38 seconds, again for uh, in-plane resolution of 0.9 by 0.9, and we acquire the entire 3D volume and only one millimeter slices. Also, this has been described automatically with an um, RX, so I have picked the ACPC line and set it to plane, so again, no need for me to check the um, slice prescription at all. So hypersense is new, um, particularly for this sequence, this RSNA. Um, so uh, MPRAGE or Bravo, um, for neuroimaging, you can apply hypersense if um, maybe you're looking for other T1 weighted contrast outside of neuro, maybe for uh, abdominal imaging. You know, we have hypersense also available with lava and lava flex now as well. So this is a, a new offering that we have. Uh, we're, we're highlighting this RSNA. And it's really excited to have now um, that applied and extended that to all uh, the entire family of 3D imaging. So yeah. it really makes our life so much easier. So here's an example from a real life scan where, um, let me just get the right images. So we have this image compared to that image. They are both acquired and uh, on the same, uh, in this case, patient. So on the left hand side, you see the example without using hypersense. So the scan time is uh, four minutes and 46 seconds. And on the right hand side um, is this protocol, even with a better implant resolution, you see that the metrics has been um, increased to 220, 288 by 288. And the scan time even has shrinked down to two minutes and 53 seconds. And we can go through that volume here and you can see that the image quality is really good with like being faster. And maybe we can also show um, the reformats on that example to show how nicely the isotropic voxel. Yeah, that's the added benefit of running these, I guess, is the uh, volume, right? Yeah. So here we go to in both. It's very nice. To our 0.5. So again, left hand side is acquired with less resolution, but more scan time. 
And maybe now I can zoom in here a little bit that we can look at the lesion a little bit better. You see that the implant resolution has really improved here. Mm -hmm. And that the signal is perfect, even though we are scanning faster. Okay. Then maybe we have uh, time to do one more scan in the um, cervical spine, spine. So what I will do is uh, I will run a localizer really in the cervical spine. Since the scanner has also um, air touch implemented in order to um, recognize coils and picking the coils um, by the software and not by the user anymore. So what we do is we are generating a sensitivity map um, before the localizer starts to really understand which coils are in the field of view. And the system will turn on only the coils needed for the scan. So for me as a user, no need to think about do I have to deselect the um, head coil or any other coils, the system will do that automatically for me. And then while we do this, we can just go ahead and look at the cube we just ran. So that is the acquired plane here. And also here we can show the reformats at the same time. So we acquired in sagittal planes, um, implant resolution was uh, one by one millimeter. And we did it with Cube, which is our 3D FSE based sequence. Um, it's an inver inversion recovery technique, obviously. Uh, so we did flare and on top of it, we did fat suppression. And um, we m achieved the good scan time of three minutes and 38 because we combined two hyperworks uh, method in one sequence. So we did compressensing, hypersense, and we did um, hypercube. Um, so we reduced our face field of view and excited only in a reduced face field of view in order to keep the scan time short. And here um, you see the reformats um, in the actual plane. And then I also can scroll through the coronal plane. So it's nice to just acquire one 3D volume and look at the other planes just in a post-processing tool. So Cube is compatible with multiple weightings too. So you can do it as a, a T1 Cube, T1 Flare Cube, T2 uh, or T2 Flare. A dual inversion recovery, which is an, an interesting way to use it to see, um, to suppress um, uh, white matter and CSF. Or I think you can even suppress gray matter. I think you can you know, set it in the preferences. Um, but then also we have a new option with um, Cube T1 or vessel wall imaging. That's that's a very nice option called um, Cube uh, MSDE, which are uh, new this RSNA as well. But all of those sequences are fully compatible with HyperSense, yeah. which makes them really uh, a lot faster. So. Okay, and then for the T2 spine, we again uh, want to run. Uh, really nice resolution protocol but still have a good scan time that is why we will combine again um, for the c-spine imaging also um, air recon dr so maybe um, just to like clear uh, our statement that you can use air recon dl to be fast but um, there is no um, uh, rules in it so you could also use air recon dl to just maybe have really high resolution protocols. Mm. So in case you are happy with your current scan times, which can be like two or three minutes, and you just want to like have higher resolution images, then you can just go ahead and take your current scan times and just um, increase the um, metrics uh, in any direction and still uh, don't lose any signal because every con DL will remove the noise out of the yeah. case space. Yeah, that's a good point. So um, we've seen most customer using Airicon DL to be faster and just like have better patient comfort to get the patients faster from the table. But if you want to have like high resolution, then um, that's your tool, I yeah. would say. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. And um, a lot of customers, uh, I'm seeing they're going faster and taking advantage of the, the resolution too. So you can you can mix it up a bit too, giving more time between patients, maybe for cleaning or um, you know, uh, uh, 
or just getting more patients per hour, but overall improving the image quality all while you go too. So here was the high resolution image. So now we can plan our C-spine images. See, we require the localizer from um, the cervical spine. Just run the field of view here over the cervical spine. And as you can see, I don't have to think about coils. The coil automatically picks a little bit of the anterior part of the head coil, picks a little bit of the posterior part of the head coil, and then turns on the PA coil slightly. Just have to get um, my set band prescribed and then place my field of view. Here you can see that we have again a good implant resolution of 0.7 by 0.9. We acquire three millimeter slices and we use and recon the L strengths to high everything in one minute and 38 seconds. So while this is running, we can still look at our um, last acquired images. So now without contrast media, but I think you can appreciate the MP rate done in one millimeter slice thicknesses. And we can also look here at the reformats. I will scroll through the slices. So this is like 0.5 millimeter slices where we look through the um, brain and the sagittal planes. And then here you can see the actual planes. Now displayed in 1.5 millimeter. And here's the coronal plane. Nice isotropic voxel that we don't have to worry about uh, any stacking in the images, they all are smooth and you can go like even in a in a an angle you pick and you'll see that you will have nice homogeneous images. So if any questions um, while we scan, please use the chat feature in the Teams channel or the Teams uh, meeting to, to ask the question. Uh, any comments or questions? Yeah. I think that is the last sequence we are going to scan and then we can open up that for any questions and um, we are happy to, to answer. And Anya and Steve, this is Anna. It uh, looks like there is a question in the chat box. Oh. I don't see it. Uh. So the question is, can Air Recon be used with any sequence or acquisition? Okay. So Eric on DL as of now can be used in our 2D FSE family, also in our single shot family and our gradient echo family. And um, soon it will be spread out to other pulse sequences as well. So um, it will be coming on the next software released with, um, with the fusion weighted imaging. Uh, right now it is uh, at our uh, current customers uh, with the sequences that Anya mentioned, but it will be coming soon for uh, the diffusion weighted uh, sequences very soon. So here you can see maybe how sharp the images look after using Air Recon DL. So again, that was done um, with a high in-plane resolution and um, we did three millimeter slices, everything in 38 seconds. Yeah, I think um, Eric on the L is like the first tool in MR where you don't have to like uh, make compromises anymore. And that is what I appreciate about that tool because that was the, uh, the most challenging um, when you are scanning in MR is always trying to make good images because you always have to pay with scan time or like drop the metric size or make thicker slices that you have enough signal. And now with having Eric on DL as a tool available, I don't have to compromise anymore because I can have my high resolution images and I still can have um, a good scan time, which is I think the first time uh, where MRI scanning becomes uh, easier than two years ago. <laughs> yeah. So I think I might uh, have a problem with the Teams meeting where I don't see any other questions. Um, Anna, was there any other questions that were that were coming up? 
No, it looks like that was the only one. So if anybody has any additional questions, please enter them into the chat box and we will address them. We do have a, a few minutes left. Okay, thank you. Not seeing any. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I hope uh, everybody is as, as excited as we are, like with our really hyper protocols. Now uh, we have, we can cover 2D for sure, 3D with our HyperWorks protocols as well. And we can finally really um, have reasonable scan times and uh, nice image quality. Great image quality too, yeah, that's very nice. Oh, there is one more question that just came in. Okay. It says, what software level do you have to be at to do Air Recon? And I think that they mean Air Recon DL. Yep. Okay. So uh, 29, DB29 software is uh, Air Recon DL coming in. Yeah. And if you're working not on an architect scanner, but on our Pioneer and our Premier scanner, then it will be um, everything accordingly to 29. So it will be PX29 or RX29. Yeah. And it's interesting, all of the systems in our install base can be upgraded to receive Air Recon DL. So if you have a 750W, uh, 450W, uh, um, you know, uh, Voyager system, 1.5T or 3T system, it can all be upgraded to the latest platform to be able to get this capability. Okay. All right, great. So uh, this will conclude our session for today. Uh, we'll be hosting more of these live demo sessions for the remainder of the week. Uh, hopefully we can have you guys join some of those uh, those meetings. But as I mentioned earlier, uh, today we're on the 3T Signal Architect, but we'll be doing them across uh, other 1.5T and other 3T systems as well later in the week. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time and Thank your you. interest. Bye. Thank you.